Bullseye, Wikipedia article audio. Bullseye is a British game show television program, with the darts theme. It was first made for the ITV network by ATV in 1981, then by Central from 1982 until 1995, and was hosted by comedian and TV presenter Jim Bowen. The show had an animated mascot named Bully, an anthropomorphic, large, brown bull, who wore a red-slash-white striped shirt and blue trousers. History Contestants Bullseye was created and owned by Andrew Wood, who came up with the idea after research into aspects of game shows with mass appeal. Program associates on the show were Mickey Brennan and Roger Edwards. The series was centered on darts. Three pairs of contestants were pitted against one another to win prizes ranging from major prizes to consolation prizes of a set of darts, a tankard, a silver goblet and a bendy bully. The show originally aired on Monday nights in September 1981 and was produced by ATV. In 1982, Bullseye was moved to Sunday afternoons, and a new CO host, Tony Green, a professional darts referee and commentator, was brought in to keep track of the scores, this helped to achieve around 17 million viewers. Green was initially brought in merely to act as a scorekeeper and commentator, but over the years his role grew, by the time the show ended he was essentially the CO host. Bullseye was moved from Sunday afternoons to Saturday afternoons from 1994 to 1995. A 15th series was planned in 1996, but Andrew Wood refused since the ITV Network Center required new conditions, and he believed it would lose its appeal. After an 11-year hiatus, Bullseye was revived for a new series which was recorded for the Digital Channel Challenge. It was produced by Granada at Yorkshire Television in the Leeds Studios, and was hosted by Dave Spikey. On screen, the show evolved as follows. Rounds The first three series had the players throwing towards the right for the first round and to the left for all subsequent rounds. From the fourth series, all three boards in use rotated on a single pillar, and all throws were to the audience's right. The first four series featured opening titles of Bully jumping out of a sign and walking into a pub to play darts, this was shortened from series two onwards, with new theme music and musical beds from series four. The opening credits of series one, much longer than the version used from series two onwards, although containing numerous elements of what would become the show's familiar theme, feature a noticeably different arrangement of the theme tune. From Series 5, the entire set was essentially inverted. The studio audience would now be seen and shot throughout the show, and the viewers would see all darts being thrown to the left. From the studio audience's point of view, Everybody continued to throw to the right. Series 5 also saw Bully driving the team bus in the opening titles and ejecting himself from the driver's seat to ride a flying dart. These titles also featured cartoon depictions of Bowen at the front of the coach, and Eric Bristow, John Lowe, Dave Whitcomb, Keith Deller, Cliff Lazarenko, Bob Anderson, Jockey Wilson, and Mike Gregory at the back. This same title sequence was used for the revived series, but featuring depictions of presenter Dave Spikey at the front of the coach and professional darts players of the 2000s at the back. Bully's Category Board A new set was introduced in the 11th series, with Bowen, who since the second series had opened the show by coming through the audience now making his entrance through the opening that would then drop a panel behind which the star prize would be hidden. In the 13th series, 
the opening titles consisted of Bully jumping out of the logo at the back of the studio and charging about to cause chaos on the set. For comic relief in March 1993, a special crossover between Bullseye and the BBC's snooker-based game show Big Break was planned, with guest comedians as contestants, and with Bowen and Big Break host Jim Davidson, along with scorers Tony Green and Big Break's John Virgo, effectively taking their counterparts' role within the game for humorous effect. Bowen and Davidson were both very enthusiastic about the idea, however the proposal never came to fruition, reportedly after ITV wanted the rights to repeat broadcasts as a self-contained program, to which the BBC declined. Bowen once described Bullseye as the second-best darts-based game show on television. There were no others at the time. Pounds for points The revived series presenter Dave Spikey had appeared as a contestant on the show in the 1980s. Charity Interlude In 1989, John Cooper appeared on the show. He was later convicted of multiple burglaries, armed robberies, and, in 2011 following advances in forensic science, two double murders, one rape, and another sexual assault. Footage of his appearance on the show was later used by the prosecution to match him to witness reports at the time. Bronze Bully Trophy A dartboard divided into ten sectors was used, each representing a different category and further subdivided into outer, middle, and inner areas. Three rounds were played with every team receiving one turn in each. On a team's turn, the darts player threw one dart and attempted to hit either the bullseye or a category chosen by their partner. Doing so awarded a cash bonus to the team and allowed the partner to answer a question in the chosen category. However, if the dart hit a different category that was still in play, no bonus was awarded and the partner had to answer a question in that category instead. Hitting a category that was out of play or failing to hit the board at all forfeited the team's turn. Questions were worth £30 each in round 1, £50 in round 2, and £100 in round 3. The values on the board were £30, £50 and £100 and the bullseye awarded £200. Categories were removed from play after one question had been asked. If the contestant in control missed the question, the first opponent to buzz in could answer an attempt to steal the money. In early series, the opponents could buzz in during the question and slash or while the contestant was thinking, but were only asked for a response if the contestant missed. Later, they could only buzz in after a miss. If neither opponent buzzed in, or if the first to do so also missed, the host gave the correct answer and the game continued. In addition, during some series a £20 penalty was imposed on contestants who buzzed in too early and failed to offer a response. Bully's Prize Board For the first seven series, the lowest scoring team was eliminated from the game after the third round. In the event of a tie for low score, the darts players for the tied teams each threw three darts at a standard match play board and the high scorers team advanced. From series 8 on, all three teams continued to the next portion of the game. Each darts player threw three darts at a standard match play board and the one who achieved the highest score won control of a question for their partner. Starting in Series 2, an incorrect response passed the question to the team with the second highest score, then the third if necessary, the first team to respond correctly won one pound per point scored by their darts player. After three questions, the team with the highest cash total from the first two rounds went through to play Bully's prize board. 
All three teams received their accumulated cash totals, as well as show-themed souvenirs that included darts, pens, patches, tankards, and bendy bully rubber dolls in the likeness of the show's mascot. Initially, if two or more darts players achieved the same total, a rethrow was held and the high scorer won control of the question, for the value of the original throw. Later, the rethrow was eliminated and the question was played on the buzzer by the tied partners. At the beginning of Part 2, a professional darts player would throw nine darts at the match play board. The show donated one pound per point scored to a charity of the winning team's choice, or two pounds per point if the total was 301 or higher. Celebrity players were given a 60-point head start, but often performed badly and would contribute some of their own money to the donation. During Series 5 through 13, the professional who recorded the highest score in the charity interlude over the course of an individual series won a bronze bully trophy. The Winners Bully Star Prize Gamble the team with the highest cash total from both rounds faced a board divided into eight pairs of alternating narrow red and wide black sectors, with the bull's eye at the center. The red sectors were numbered one through eight, each corresponding to a different prize, and the bull's eye represented a larger item, Bully's special prize. The team threw nine darts the first and last three by the darts player and the middle three by their partner, and won the prizes for all red sectors they hit. Black sectors awarded nothing, and hitting the same red sector twice forfeited that prize hence the show's catchphrase, keep out of the black and in the red, nothing in this game for two in a bed. Series 1 Differences For most of the program's original run, Prize values were restricted by the Independent Broadcasting Authority, which may explain the perceived poor quality of prizes on offer. Although some prizes were laughed at by the studio audience even then, smaller prizes were taken for granted at the time, and they seemed relatively lavish compared to those on offer in BBC game shows such as Blankety Blank. In a 2006 episode, Bully's special prize was a fully functional show-themed fruit machine. 1985-86, John Lowe, 1986-87, Lionel Smith, 1987-88, Ray Farrell, 1988-89, Mike Gregory, 1989-90, Eric Bristow, 1990-91, Bob Anderson, 1991-92, Mandy Solomons, 1992-93, Mike Gregory, 1994, Kevin Painter. After throwing their nine darts at Bully's prize board, the winning team had to decide whether to risk their prizes for a chance at Bully's star prize a large mystery prize hidden behind a screen in the studio. For the first ten series, the money they had won for themselves was not at risk, beginning with series 11, they had to put up both their money and prizes in order to play. If they chose to try for the star prize, they were given six darts to score 101 points or more on a standard match play dartboard. If they succeeded, they received the star prize and kept their previous winnings, if not, they lost all cash slash prizes they had risked. When money was at stake, the host would tell the team that they would receive only their BFH if they lost. If the winning team declined to play, the second place team had the option to risk their money and try to win the prize, if this pair also declined the third-place team was given the same choice. The actual prize was only revealed after a team had played the round, win or lose, or if all three teams chose not to play. 
To determine the order of play in Bullies category board, the darts players each threw one dart at a board of concentric rings, the one closest to the bull played first, in Bullies category board, the values were £20, £10 and £30, with £50 for a bull's eye. Instead of awarding a cash bonus, the darts player's throw determined the value and category of a question that the partner had to answer. Hitting the bull's eye allowed the partner to take any available question for £50, question values in the second portion of the game were not determined by the thrower's totals. Instead, the partner of the highest scorer could choose a question unopposed for £25, £50 or £101. If two players got the same score, a single tie-breaking throw was held and the one who hit closer to the bull won control. The team with the most winnings for that round went through, Bully's prize board had a red-slash-green color scheme, and Bowen often interrupted the game after a non-winning throw to state that the team had won a booby prize, such as a bag of crisps or a trip on the Titanic. Bully's star prize was usually a holiday, a car, a caravan, or a speedboat. Sometimes in the earlier series, less lavish star prizes were given away so as to fit within the EBA S prize limits. In the last two series, after prize limits had been lifted, the star prize would sometimes be Bully's treasure chest of £5,000. Remake Theme Music Presenters Production From Series 8 onwards, if the second and third place teams had the same total, both were asked if they wanted to gamble. If both said yes, the two darts players threw three darts each at the match play board and the higher score won the right to play for the star prize. Tony Green On the show, it was never made clear if the two winning contestants had to share the star prize or if they got one each. The first series included several changes or differences in its rules, as described below. Bullseye was one of several game shows to be released as an interactive DVD game for Christmas 2005, although the game did not feature the voice of Jim Bowen, and Bully was redesigned. A Bullseye board game was made around the same time. A classic Bullseye DVD game was released the following year which featured the voices of both Jim Bowen and Tony Green and also classic footage from the show. A second edition of the board game was also released in 2006. Nick Owen In 2005, it was announced that program creator Andrew Wood had signed a contract with Granada Media for Granada to produce a one-hour-long celebrity special bullseye show to be hosted by Ant and December. This special was part of Ant and Dex game show Marathon, in turn part of ITV's 50th anniversary celebrations, and was aired on ITV on October 22, 2005. Vernon Kay and Coronation Street star William Rocha were the contestants, accompanied by professional darts players Eric Bristow and Andy Fordham, while Tony Green reprised his role as CO host. Subsequently, Granada decided that a new series of Bullseye would be produced early the following year, on Challenge, and that the show was to be hosted by comedian Dave Spikey. Bully was also redesigned for the new series, albeit very similar to the Bully used in the original series. The new series of Bullseye returned on Challenge in April 2006. The show maintained the style of prizes from the original, bar white goods none of the cash prizes had increased in value since the second series in 1982 although the bullseye on the category board had decreased to £150 from the £200 of the original series. 
Some of the prizes from Bully's prize board were of more modern game show standard, such as a TFT television and an MP3 player. Dave Spikey and Tony Green commented on BBC Radio 1's Colin and Edith show on April 19, 2006. The only game show on the television in which the prizes get a round of applause. Transmissions The revived series was strikingly similar to the original series. Whilst refreshed, the show maintained the original theme music and stings and used a remade version of the original second title sequence, Bully Driving the Team Bus. A cartoon version of Dave Spikey replaced Jim's in the titles. The Challenge revival ran for 30 episodes. On May 19, 2007, another one-hour-long celebrity special was aired on ITV, this time as part of Vernon Kay's game show Marathon. This time the contestants were newsreader Andrea Catherwood, footballer Graham L. E. So and another Coronation Street star, Michael L. E. Vell, paired with professional darts players Martin Adams, Phil Taylor and Raymond Van Barneveld respectively. Once again, Tony Green reprised his CEO host role. Jim Bowen did not appear on the Bullseye episode, instead, he appeared on the Marathon's remake of The Golden Shot, acting as Bowen the Bolt. At one point, he did make the comment to Kay, Vernon, this is a bit like Bullseye used to be, throwing arrows for prizes. The theme music for the show was written by John Patrick who was head of music department at ATV and Central. Series Christmas Specials The show was unusual in having two different closing theme tune arrangements a rapid, upbeat version played when the contestants won the star prize, and a more bluesy one in a minor key played when they lost or, on some occurrences, nobody took the gamble. The seldom heard third version was used on some of the rare occasions when none of the three teams chose to take the final gamble, this was a carnival-like version of the theme with similarities to the winning version. The show was into its fourth series when all three teams declined to take the gamble. Referee slash scorekeeper Announcer From series 1 to 9 the show was recorded at ATV slash Central House in Broad Street, Birmingham. In Series 10, it moved to Central S Purpose Built Studios at Lenton Lane in Nottingham, where it remained until its first demise in 1995. The Challenge revival was recorded at the Yorkshire Television Studios in Leeds, and the game show marathon one-offs were produced at the London Studios.